voy a aplicar la dinámica y además les voy a, a comentar que también... And let me also add that with us today we have Sergio Rojas, who was the registry lead until a short time ago. He has a vast experience in the public policy forum and today Janina is the registry leader after having been a, a, a policy official so she also has a lot of experience and they are going to be very helpful and Sergio are you there can you could you say hello yes I'm here hello Mariela hello everyone yes it's going to be a pleasure to be in this tutorial so I'll be here for you good so we're all here let me then start describing the dynamics and then I'm going to introduce the rest of the people. So now we are going to start with a presentation with some slides. In a few moments, I will show my presentation. I'm going to share the screen. But before doing that, we're going to show some slides to explain uh, what LACNIC is and uh, the policy process. And we're also going to um, uh, uh, be as interactive as possible in this activity. And we're going to try some things that we've never done. So we have the two chairs of the Public Policy Forum, Ariel Wegel and Thomas Lin. Are you there? Could you say hello? Hello, I'm Thomas. Hello, good morning. I'm Ariel here. A pleasure to be here. Good, wonderful to have you here with us in this workshop because so we can give the audience uh, tools that are enriching and from different uh, perspectives. Where's my presentation? Here it is. Please confirm that you see it. Yes, we do. Thank you, Mariela. Wonderful. So I'll show the slides in the presentation format. So let's get started. We're going to try to go as slow as possible because remember that we have interpretation and transcription and we don't want the interpreters to hate us uh, because sometimes we get excited with a lot of adrenaline and we go fast so we but we are going to try to be uh, uh, to speak um, slowly and we get to try to be as clear as possible for everyone so as I was telling you this is an open workshop so to help you understand, first of all, the policies that will be debated in the Public Policy Forum. But in addition to that, we wanted to understand how those policies uh, get to be discussed in that forum. So let's get started. As usual, we we'll start by telling you about the regional internet registries. Not all the audience is uh, our usual attendance. So this is a good opportunity to tell you that uh, the um, regional internet registries, there are five in the world and there are, they are in charge of managing the uh, internet numbers. The numeric resources are the IPv4 and IPv6 addresses of the autonomous systems. As you can see on the screen, Depending on the uh, regions, the regional registries are distributed are in the United States and Canada, APNIC for Asia Pacific, RIP in Europe, and well, AFRINIC for Africa. As to our region, Latin America and the Caribbean, the organization in charge of uh, managing the numeric resources is LACNIC. Let's talk about LACNIC. It's a, um, a non-profit international association that was uh, established in Uruguay in 2002 in Montevideo. And today 
LACNIC has over 11,000 members in 33 territories spread about the region, and that those 11,000 are either end users, organizations, companies, etc., that have requested uh, numeric resources of LACNIC, and LACNIC has um, assigned them, and from then on, they become they are part of the LACNIC membership. So they may be operators, uh, internet uh, service providers, different companies, uh, the, the academia, all the educational system, governments, and end users. Now, how does LACNIC manage these resources? We do it through policies or rules, standards, norms, laws that determine how the internet numeric resources should be administered. As I was telling you, these are IPv6, IPv4, the autonomous systems. So those rules say how LACNIC should manage them. But in addition to that, how LACNIC needs to push this forward since uh, uh, the moment that uh, a norm uh, is produced until it uh, until the, the end stage in the uh, until it becomes part of the manual um, that is it's as if it were a government and with uh, with a Congress uh, or Parliament where they debate uh, the bills uh, before they turn into acts. So it's similar to that. Now, who decides what the rules or uh, norms will be? Certain people, now I'm going to explain who they are. They draft them and then they're included into the um, policy manual. So that is the process. Now we are going to break it down a bit. That is, there are people, one or several people, who draft those uh, proposals, uh, uh, a sort of bill that we want to be implemented in uh, the resource uh, management and administration. And who's that? All of us. All of us, all of you listening, the community as a whole, the internet community in general, in the region and in other regions. And now we're going to see how it works. Uh, anybody or groups of people, any individual or groups of people who want to propose policies for the administration of the numeric uh, resources can do it. Let's see how. What does that person or the group of persons need? So do you need to attend all uh, LACNIC meetings? Is it necessary? No, you don't need to. N nor is it necessary to pay for that proposal to be presented and to become a policy. Do you need to be a member of the LACNIC community? No, there's no need to. Anybody, any individual or any group of persons in the community can submit a proposal. Do I need to have an email account? Yes, here, yes, indeed. You need to have an email account. That's the only thing you need. Why? Because if you submit a proposal, you need to be a part of a mailing list, a discussion list that is uh, politicas at lacnic.net. We're going to leave it there in the chat. And here you can register at this link. This is the only requirement. So the only thing you need is an email account. The only thing you need to send a proposal. And if after uh, it goes through a process, it may become a policy managing the resources in the region and be part of the mm, policy manual. So that you have to. It just takes a process. Once the proposal is submitted, and it will be submitted through a very simple web form that you can find on the LACNIC website. You just fill out your personal information, and you'll explain why you're proposing 
uh, this and what the policy or the proposal would change or create or build. So you will elaborate a little bit on the proposal that you are submitting. And once you send this form, we begin the process. We call it the policy development process. PDP in Spanish, it's, a, it's an acronym that you will hear throughout our event. So the uh, policy development process kickstarts the process. Once any of you submits a proposal, we will begin the process. So stage one, it would be the initial discussion stage. What that entails, it's eight weeks where we will discuss the submissions in the public policy list because once you submit a proposal, you will automatically send a list to the other people saying, for example, Mariela Rocha has proposed or has submitted a new policy proposal. The policy is such and such, the title and a description. So everyone who is subscribed to that policy list will be notified and we can begin the discussion. I think this is good. I think that's bad. I'm not sure what this is solving. I don't like this part of the proposal. So that is an open period for eight weeks for the community to express how they feel about it. Once those eight weeks are over, but also the policy has been submitted to what we call the the public policy forum, which is what we are going to do next Tuesday, October the 6th at LACNIC 34. And this usually uh, takes place at all LACNIC events. Sometimes we have to uh, discuss additional policies and I will tell you why in a minute. So once that policy has been discussed for eight weeks and it was also presented at one of our fora, so the chairs, today I introduced them already, Tomás and Ariel, they are the chairs in office, let's say right now, they will determine whether there is consensus or not. We will see in a minute how we define consensus, but we can, uh, maybe we can use another word. They, they say whether these uh, proposals have been accepted. They will determine if it has been widely accepted by the community or not. Ariel, later on in his presentation, will let you know what they will take into account to, to determine if we have reached consensus or not. Consensus is the proper word to use. For these couple of weeks, Ariel or Tomas, whoever is chairing, will assess whether the proposal that's been discussed throughout the period has reached consensus. If it has, then we will go to stage two uh last comments or observations in blue on screen this will take four weeks it's something like saying well we are announcing that we think this policy has reached consensus but we will provide four additional weeks for everyone to make like the latest observation it's like a now or never sort of thing you can speak up now or never the community could maybe say that, well, I do not agree that there has been consensus, or yes, I do, I think it's great, consensus was clear. So, I mean, the community can just be outspoken. We have four weeks to say or to assess, as I said before, a second round of consensus. If it was reached in the first place or not. After these four weeks, we will have Ariel and Tomas discussing once again if the second round of, uh, was reached, if we reached consensus the second time around. If this happens, we'll go to the last stage. This is the board that will ratify this uh, proposal. LACNIC's uh, board will then study this proposal that has reached the consensus of community and they'll decide if it'll be ratified or not. If they do 
that proposal goes straight to implementation. Sometimes it's immediate implementation, sometimes it's not. It requires more time because there are systems to be adapted and so on. If the board does not ratify that proposal, well then we will ask list members to do a more thorough assessment of the situation and we will start the process over. In addition, we would start the process over if, for example, let's assume that Mariela Rocha's proposal reaches stage number two, the two week period where chairs will have to decide if consensus has been reached or not, and they think that it has not, it has not been reached. What happens in this case, chairs will tell the author, in this case, Mariela Rocha, they will tell her, well, there's been no consensus. You can either drop the policy because it has not been accepted by the community, or maybe you can amend it and, and submit a new version. If the author decides to amend it and to submit a new version, because I truly do believe that this policy needs to be included in the policy manual, I will draft it again, taking into account the discussions, the observations that were made by the community, and I will make, I will draft a new version. So this new version will go back to the beginning stage number one, the initial discussion of that policy. So the entire process that we described is the, what we call the policy development uh, process or PDB in Spanish. So it is the process that a, that a proposal needs to go through to actually become a policy and be included in the policy manual. I have uh, mentioned concepts, consensus or acceptance, but really the, the proper word is consensus. Let me read to you the definition. We think that a proposal has reached consensus when it is supported by significant opinions after broad discussion and if there are no technical irrefutable objections. It is important that there is discussion. A proposal that is not discussed, well, we cannot say that it has been accepted by the community. Why? Because there's been no discussion. Plus, if there are objections to that proposal, well, authors need to be able to, to address those objections. They need to be able to respond to those objections and that objection should be neutralized, let's say. Now, if that doesn't happen, if there are technical objections that couldn't be argued against, well, there's no consensus either. We will reach consensus then if, and there are two aspects to assess it. The first one is the discussion at the policy list level and the discussion at the public policy forum. So the chairs will have to take all of this into account to decide whether consensus has been reached or not. And I can assure you this is not an easy task and they will tell you about it later on. What will we do on LACNIC 34 online? We will discuss five policies there were more, really, there were more, but you know that we, unfortunately, time is limited and we needed to choose five out of all of the proposals we had. That probably we will discuss this in a, in a second forum that will take place before the end of the year. So the five that we'll be discussing this time are the ones that you can see on screen. And you can see that some of them are marked as new because they are the, the first time they are being discussed at a forum for the first time, while the others are not new. It's the sixth time uh, that are being discussed. And what uh, I would also like you to remember is that all policies are identified by a code so once you submit the proposal, that 
proposal is given an ID by the system, and that is the name that the author uses to name that policy proposal. So the first one is automatically assigned by the system, and the second part is decided by the policy author. Now you can see the, the pictures of our chairs. Ariel and Tomas are both very active participants in our community for many years now. They've been elected, voted on to choose uh, the chairs. And Ariel, this is actually his second time around. He'll be in this position from this year till 2022. And Tomas will be on until 2021 when we have the next elections. So they are both very charismatic and really they turned the public policy forum into a very entertaining event and they really want people to participate. So that's the idea for you to get to know them a little bit today. Now on screen, and I wish I could show you a picture of the public policy forum with the audience sitting in the same room and when they ask for the microphone to, to, to give an opinion. Well, right now we have uh, online forums due to the situation that, well, we know all, we all know of very well, but really we are making a big effort to really have a lot of interaction among participants and that's what we will have next Tuesday, October the, October the 6th. And on screen you can see the different time slots for the public policy forum. Well, for today, I thought I had to to explain something else, but no, let's go right to the activity today. Well, what we will do today, we will choose two proposals. Well, actually, they've been chosen already by uh, together with the chairs and Janina. We've chosen two proposals, which we'll explain. Ariel will explain the proposals, Ariel and Tomas and we will work on these policies. The second session, once they have explained the policies, is when we want to start the interactive session. You can ask any questions or make any observations on these policies. Everything that happens today on our hands-on workshop, everything that happens today will not be part of the public policy forum and that needs to be clear to all. What we discussed here today, if you think it's important and relevant for that policy, you'll have to say it again at the public policy forum. This is a workshop, this is practice, rehearsal for you to learn uh, about the policies that will be discussed and for you to practice, well, the process to discuss the policies, listen to feedback, but what we'll say here today, they will not be taken into account uh, to consider whether that policy has been re has reached consensus or not. That we will do on Tuesday. And once we listen to all of your comments and observations, we will have a conclusion ses session together with Shanina and the chairs. Before giving the floor to Ariel, who will present the policies we'll be working on today, and I will tell you later on how you will make your comments and observations. Right now, really what I want you to do is to listen to Ariel, and he will work on these two proposals. He'll explain them to you. What do you think, Ariel? Are you ready? to present these policies? Okay, well, let's see if I can do it. Let's see if we can do this. Thank you, Mariela. So Tomas and I will present it. So let me first begin by sharing my screen. Can you tell me if you can see my screen? Yes, we can see it very well, Ariel. Well, first of all, thank you all. Welcome. Thank you, Mariela, for a great introduction. 
Hello, Tomás. Hello, un pepito. So we are not very serious, you'll see, when uh, leading the forum. We just don't want this to be a very stiff event and not boring at all. So don't feel surprised if we uh, um, uh, um, uh, make jokes and we encourage people to come to uh, participate. First of all, I'm going to explain the first proposal. We insist a lot with this topic. It's not necessary to be a super expert to present uh, proposals or to uh, give uh, your feedback, telling us what you think uh, the other pe person's uh, proposal is. Please take into account that each of us, we, we have a, a different point of view uh, that is significant to decide whether the proposal needs to be pushed further or not. Mariela already explained uh, that you don't be, need to be a telecom expert or a policy expert, but it's just that from your own uh, role or place, you have the possibility of determining whether what you are proposing improves the policy manual or not. So please don't think that you need to be a super expert. You may see that many of the authors are people with a uh, a lot of experience in the community or that may be very famous, but that doesn't mean that uh, you cannot uh, um, disc debate it with them and uh, go against their views. So please feel free to make any comments you wish. Remember that whatever we say here, well, we are not counting it for the consensus. We, today we are just practicing. So any idea, anything that happens, you're going to have to repeat it during the forum on Tuesday because typically at the policy forum, people present uh, very good ideas, but then they feel shy and they don't uh, say it in the forum, but please, I encourage you to do that. Another important uh, piece of information, we as chairs do not present the proposals. They're presented by authors. So what we are going to do is tell you about two proposals by two authors, and by no means are we going to make any comments in that regard. We always try to be the devil's advocate, um, giving the different points of view. So in no, no, we are not uh, trying to convince you that uh, proposals are good or bad. We just want to show the different aspects so that you may reach your own uh, conclusions and uh, provide your feedback at the next forum. So even if Tomas or myself or Mariela, even if we make any comments, not necessarily do you uh, need uh, to uh, uh, conclude that um, the idea is good or bad, the proposal is good or bad. So that is what I had to tell you. Now Tomas has the floor. Excellent. This proposal was presented, was submitted by an author 2023. That was the third proposal submitted uh, in 2020. So what the proposal says, there it changed. The title is Impact analysis is mandatory. So first we need to say what uh, the impact analysis is. Mariela already explained it, but we're going to repeat it. As a community, we uh, present uh, our policy proposals as a community too. We debate it together. We check whether the, there are things we like whether or don't like. And also LACNIC uh, tells us what the impact would be if that policy were to be accepted. For instance, 
it may the proposal may say we have to uh, distribute uh, two million dollars among all the LACNIC members. So as a community, we would say, yeah, it's wonderful. I want uh, sweet money. But LACNIC says, uh, no, if we do that, we uh, won't have the money. So LACNIC presents the potential impact of that new proposal from the legal standpoint or financial or whatever. So far, this impact assessment or impact analysis have been have been presented optionally by LACNIC. LACNIC tells us, the community, what the impact of a, a certain proposal would be, but uh, quite often they haven't conducted an impact analysis on different topics. So those uh, issues sometimes it, it takes uh, a while before they are presented. Sometimes the proposals are complex or there may be delays in the organization. LACNIC doesn't have uh, huge resources. So, and people already have busy days. So it is often the case that those areas that LACNIC is trying to see uh, how would uh, see the impact. Sometimes the impact analysis doesn't come right away. So you'll see that in some of the proposals that we are going to present on Wednesday after the uh, author uh, presents it, we'll say whether LACNIC has presented an impact analysis or not. It also happens that sometimes there are many versions and the versions are replaced by new ones and sometimes the impact analysis uh, are not there for the new version. So we have to, they have to read it again and check what the impact would be of this new version. So this is what I just said. That is why the impact analysis uh, uh, authors have seven days to submit a proposal before the forum. That's the deadline, seven days before. So, uh, so if, if it's a uh, Tuesday 6th, well, last Monday, or this uh, the Monday this week was the last day to send uh, the proposal. Now, what the author wants to do is to make the impact analysis official. They, and uh, so this author says that they need to be mandatory and they need to be published at least four weeks before the presentation for each in, in the mailing list. So once you receive it in the mailing list, four weeks later, the impact analysis needs to be there. And you can extend it two additional weeks if there are extraordinary and duly uh, justified uh, reasons. So here we start with the discussion. What do we mean by extraordinary case and duly justified? Because some people may say, well, with the coronavirus, I think this is an extraordinary case, so we could push it for later, three weeks. But somebody else may say, no, as we most of us are working from home we have actually much more time so there shouldn't be it shouldn't be considered an extraordinary case so this is what ariel sort of mentioned that is that the policy proposals are not uh, always complex technical things that is you have to Tunnelize the BGP uh, through IPv6 and etc. Et I know it's things like this. The impact analysis submitted by LACNIC today as something that LACNIC senses an input uh, would now become um, uh, mandatory for each version. So I'm going to read some parts. 
um, today what we have in the current text of the PDP, the function of uh, the moderators, Adiel and myself, our role is to receive comments by the LACNIC staff on uh, different uh, aspects of uh, a policy proposal. As I said earlier, this is an option of LACNIC. I think that almost always, they almost always uh, uh, submit it, sometimes because of very special reasons they may not. So the new text wants to remove that from the functions of the moderator, but rather to transfer it to LACNIC. Um, so, and LACNIC is going to show the impact analysis. So there must be legal aspects, um, including recommendations uh, by the staff, etc. So what we are going to see in the discussion is how uh, we're going to determine whether people agree or not. I don't know what we want. Uh, um, um, maybe we could use the Q&A um, to see whether you agree or not. Uh, we could do a sham test. Uh, to see whether, well, yes, we don't have much time. As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest uh, finishing with this proposal and start uh, and open the floor for comments because we only have 15 minutes late. Right. Another question would be why four or six weeks? Yes, right. So let's uh, discuss that just uh, for the sake of the game. Why four weeks? Why not six? What not, why not five? Why not one week? So those questions, well, you should ask those questions. Mariela, let's go to the second. Well, actually, what I'm going to propose now, I'm going to propose to both of you is to work on the first. Let's try and uh, complete the exercise with the audience with what you just said, with the impact analysis. So let me explain what the process is like. I Here I'm acting as an author. I submitted a proposal. You, through the Q&A, you should send questions. Here, down here. Yes, Q&A in Portuguese. Well, they are answering uh, through the chat. Uh, they sent a lot of uh, questions. Remember that all the presentations of the event will be available, posted in the website of the event. And there in the chat, you'll see that they're giving you the links. But please ask, you are invited to ask questions. The idea is that you may ask all the questions you may have uh, and if you didn't understand something clearly about this proposal, send your questions. And we also in encourage you to give your feedback. For instance, I think that uh, this proposal would improve the uh, 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 development process because of this reason or not. So this is just a rehearsal. It's a sham meeting. It's the purpose is just for you to practice. So please, um, you can ask any questions you have. This is an opportunity for you to practice. Yes, excellent, Janina. It's a sort of uh, practice. As a matter of fact, there's a question here. For instance, Antonio said, how many people would conduct the impact analysis? Well, I can answer that question, Mariela. Well, it's a very good question. Thank you for asking it, Antonio. Because it's good to uh, convey this message from the staff. The impact analysis depends a lot on uh, the proposal. But what we try at LACNIC is to analyze 
all the areas that depend on that uh, proposal. For instance, in the registry area, in the part of administration there, we analyze that, we analyze whether it has to do with the legal area too, and with the technical area to give the perspectives from that point of view. And sometimes we presented with the other RIRs. Uh, so um, may, they may then decide whether that uh, has already been done by somebody else in another uh, uh, RIR. So I don't know whether you all know that we also work with the NICs, um, uh, NIC Mexico and NIC Brazil. We also engage them. So we have to coordinate with a lot of people before, so that we may consider all everything with the community. I don't know whether that's enough. You can ask me for further clarification. Ariel, did you want to say anything? In general, many times what we do on the Q&A is just to state whether you agree or not. And we can not only assess the question with that, but like the, the sense of the question as well. I think there's another question actually on the Q&A. Yes, there is. The question is T3K0, why should the assessment be mandatory? Do all proposals need to be analyzed? Actually, that's what we are trying to discuss. LACNIC provides an impact assessment. They evaluate, or LACNIC evaluates the risks, so to speak, of implementing the proposal. And up to now, LACNIC would do that in optional is not the word that I'm trying to find. I would say could willingly, they made the, their best effort, right? Yeah, they made their best effort. We've always done impact assessments and very professionally uh, done. Just the fact that they were done voluntarily, it's not just a single two paragraph that just says, yes, it will have an impact and that's it. No, we're speaking about very professional documents. Do all proposals require an assessment? Not so far, but Lending did it anyway. So what we're trying to do, or what this proposal is trying to do is to make it mandatory. I will play uh, the role of the author now, and I would say that, okay, that's fine, but when LACNI submits an impact assessment, since it's such a comprehensive document, they take into account many aspects that really will help reach consensus. So really it is important to make an impact assessment because me as an author, as I think that my proposal is very urgent and needs to be addressed today and to be approved today, I want the impact assessment to take place as quickly as possible for me to evaluate whether I have made a new proposal or an amendment because I want it to be done very quickly and to be implemented very quickly. Right, so I will be against, and I would say not necessarily, because really no one's dying, and that proposal is not uh, life and death matters. So the impact assessments done by LACNIC, they've always been done on time, or maybe sometimes they haven't, but other than that, unless the impact assessment shows there is a social risk, a huge social risk or a huge loss of money, usually impact assessments, I mean, all of us as a community, it is LACNIC's uh, problem on how to implement it. Great, guys, great. Thank you for your feedback, your feedback to the audience. And we have two more questions. I know it's about time, but I will, uh, let me, invite the audience to also practice, well, you're 
asking questions and you're writing questions, but I would also like the audience to say, I do agree or I don't agree with this proposal because such and such. I think that would be good practice. Marcelo Sosa says, impact assessments can include a financial risk assessment or the social risks that would entail implementing these proposals. I mean, not just material resources entailed, but also how would it impact uh, the development of solutions around this proposal? And let me try to venture an answer myself as I am part of the staff that conducts impacts assessments depending on the proposal, of course, but many times we we do have to to make all sorts of uh, impact assessments because it's impact, exactly impact what we are trying to analyze on impact on the different processes and systems. So everything needs to be taken into account. Usually it's very common that we do so, especially when there is a change in the system. Of course, that's not small feature. Maria Eugenia Cordero says, how long uh, do we have to make an impact assessment? Minimum and maximum. Well, there is not a preset allocated time. That's why the author is saying that it needs to be mandatory. Mandatory and we would, they're saying that we also need a, a, a particular deadline. Yes, of course. And maybe this is the last comment. Guillermo Pagliero says, I think the impact assessment is very important. See, Guillermo is already given us his opinion. That's what chairs need to receive feedback, to really uh, get a feel of what the community thinks. Because uh, maybe due to a lack of knowledge, many times a policy can make operations more difficult for LACNIC staff but I think they need to be uh, on time. That's what Guillermo wants to share with the community. So all of your opinions, I mean, this is rehearsal practice. We're just playing around. This is what we want you to do with this policy and other policies. We want you to, to, be, to be brave. Just give us your opinion. Tell us what you think. Mariela, let me add something else. Remember that there is consensus so far. If you're going to speak up against it, you need to argue different reasons. You can just say no, because you don't want to. You have to argue and, and, and provide justifications to your, to your comments. One uh, new uh, person says, I do not agree for the impact assessment to be mandatory because that would entail to invest resources. Actually, the proposal needs to be analyzed whether the impact assessment or not is necessary. What, we're, what they're doing here is they're questioning the assessment, right? But well, okay, I think it is time. We are out of time. So we need to round up this uh, first workshop. What we wanted to do is uh, to, to, to practice with two proposals. We only had time to discuss one, but uh, Janina and Sergio, I would like to hear from you. You are our special guests. And Janina, I don't think I, I, I gave you enough time to mute, speak. Mute, Did I? Janina, you're on mute. Thank you, Tomas. What's important here is uh, for the community to participate. That's really the main purpose of this workshop, for community members to, to take part in the policy development process, especially uh, the forum that will take place as part of this event. As we always say, I mean, the policies are here for us to, to manage internet numeric resources. So in addition to this workshop, of course, we never have enough time. You can write info, and we'll let you know the email address, info at policies dot dash uh, policies, .net, sorry. And once you see the proposals that we'll be discussing the forum, I'll ask you to read them, please. You have time before the forum. The forum will take place tomorrow. So feel free to, to write, Mariela, the chairs, myself, we can, we can 
a reply and we'll gladly do so. Please, if you have any questions, uh, write. It is very important for all of you to participate tomorrow. And during the event, we're also uh, on Slack, so you can ask questions there as well. So before saying goodbye, Sergio, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sergio, gracias por haber estado acá con nosotros porque te necesitábamos a vida. Thank you, thank you, we, thank you for joining us. We really needed you because, I mean, you know the procedure very well, so you can help us answer questions. Thank you for collaborating.